I'm Margaret from Sewing Machine Warehouse in Sydney, Australia, and I'd like to show you a quick method of applying bias binding. And this is the way I have always done it. Now it's quite simple. Um, so this is what types of things you can finish off with your bias binding. Okay, so this is a a glass case there, a bib. Okay, tissue holder. A little sewing kit. So these are all different things you can finish off with your bias binding. That's the scissor holder. Okay, and I'm going to make this little peg bag. But I'll just take you over here. And I'll just show you quickly what bias means. Okay, so bias is the angle on your fabric that goes from um, one point to the diagonally opposite point when your grain is cut straight. Okay, so that there is the bias of the fabric. Okay, so if you've got some strips like this, so I cut them 1.5 inches wide when I'm going to bind any of the uh, objects that I make. Alright, so if you've got some strips like that and you want to There you go. We're going to take them to the machine and join them. I've got a little tip for you, by the way. If you've got some random fabric and you've cut them all into um, bias strips, like this, and you've got some edges that aren't cut on the bias, put all your strips facing upwards, so like that. So they're all facing the one way, and get them on top of each other, lay them on top of each other like so. Alright. This will ensure that you have them on the right angle. So, on your board you'll have a bias line. Just place them beside that line. Take your ruler and using one of the straight lines on your board, just cut through the whole stack like so and that will give you perfect 45 degree angles okay and this is this will also ensure that when you go to join them they're all in the right direction to be joined okay so we're just going to take these across and join them on the machine Right, so here's a um, continuous strip that I've already made, but I need to join some more on for extra length. So take this makes it really simple. So take your strip and place them on top of each other at that angle with a little bit hanging over on the edge and I'm going to sew from that point along now another good tip is to shorten your stitch length so maybe on two and I don't back stitch okay just sew forward Like that and now we'll take it across and press that on the mesh on the um, ironing board okay I'll join another one on so just with a little overhang 
and you're going to sew from there to there. Okay, so now we're ready to start binding. Now, I'll do a straight edge first. Now this doesn't necessarily have to be done with a bias strip. You can actually bind this with a straight grain piece of fabric, but bias strips are really good, especially if you have fabric like a check or a stripe and you get that nice crisscross shape, okay? And the other thing is you've cut all this bias binding, um, you may as well use it. All right. Now, what you need to do is place your bias binding strip face down onto the back of your fabric. Okay, so this here is the front. So, we start at the back. Now, I don't necessarily pin, I just adjust as I go. And... I like to do approximately a one centimetre seam. Okay, so there's my 10 mil line there. Now you can back stitch at this point. Now be careful when you're coming up to your join that you don't um, flip it, so keep your finger there to keep it flat if you have to just raise your foot to fix that up and just adjust it as you sew off that excess and now we're going to press that at the iron so that we don't get any lumps or bumps okay so let's do that so just make sure that you've pushed that all over to one side Turn that over. Now, if you want, you can turn that separately and press it a quarter of an inch. But I like to do it without pressing it. So, get some pins and just turn that about a quarter of an inch. Put your pin in like so. So do that in several spots. And all you're trying to do is just cover your row of stitching. So depending on how much thickness there is in the fabric that you're binding depend, will depend on how much seam allowance you do on that initial row. So if it's quite thin, a centimetre is good, but if it's thick, like if it has a little bit of wadding in there or whatever, you might want to do it at a quarter of an inch and that will give you more turn. Okay, so do do it. Space your pins so they're not too close together. Like I said, it's easier to sit and do this with your hand than to iron it and have to fiddle in case it's not the right width. Just take that one out and do that one again. And then this makes it easier when you take it to your machine. Oops. 
Okay, so that's how it looks. Now we'll take it across to our machine and top stitch it down. Now at this point you could use a top stitch foot but I'm just going to eye it. Okay, so I'm just using the inside of my foot to line up with the fold of my fabric. And pull those pins out as you get to them. And just smooth it out as you sew. How's that looking? And don't worry too much on the other side, but usually if you do that um, where you line it up with your stitching on the front, it will line up easily on the back. It definitely beats hand stitching. And give it a little bit bulky where you've got your join just use a pin and that'll hold it there you go not bad Okay, now let's set, set that aside and we'll work on binding this curved edge. Now this is the real reason you cut your strips on the bias because it goes around the curves really easy. So same again from the back. Place your bias binding strip upside down. Now if you have this um, join really close to the edge just stitch that out. Okay, it's not important. We've got plenty. Now on the curve, I actually like to do it a little shorter on the seam allowance because I need that extra for the curve. As you come around the curve, just slow stitching and adjust as you sew. So watch your seam allowance guide on the machine and you can just gently stretch as you ease, so as you're not wrinkling the binding. And this is why I don't pin, because pins just get in the way, and it is easy to manoeuvre the fabric if the pins aren't there. Okay, now that kind of tends to want to 
go to the top anyway so you can press it now but see how it just wants to naturally push itself out all right so let's take that to the board and press it so firstly just press from the back Being careful not to wrinkle the binding. Okay, then turn it over. And if you have to, just press it in that natural shape that it wants to take. And then we'll pin it just like before. And see, because you've got that extra fabric, you can easily adjust the fold. without worrying about your stitching showing. Just make sure it's even. So you might need a few extra pins around the curve just to hold it. And just pat down lightly with your fingers. And so on. Okay, now that we've finished pinning, let's go back to the machine. And this is where you really need to use your needle down position because you're going to have to do some tight maneuvering. But it's the same as before. So just use the inside of your foot or if you've got a top stitching foot, perfect. back stitch there so slowly as you come around that curve position if you need to but just take it nice and easy and so now that you know how to do all the shapes and curves you can start binding to your heart's content So that one missed the mark a little bit, but because it's on the inside, it's of no concern. All right. So if you have any questions about bias binding, just leave a note below. Um, don't forget to watch our other videos. Press like, and uh, if you if you've seen anything in the videos that you uh, would like to purchase just check our website so from all of us at sewing machine warehouse happy sewing <music>